Hi there, welcome to Shopcast number 34. This one is about Drops Alpaca. But first I'm going to show you some progress that I've made. This is the stripes, st uh, stripe study shawl that I was working on last podcast. And throw on fine tweed. And you can see that I've just started and I'm one stripe past my halfway point. Um, it doesn't actually skew like that. It's just that the needles I have it on are a little bit too short for it to lay out flat. That help? That helps a little bit. Yeah. So you can see over on this side, I have my short rows where they're really skinny at the end, at the beginning of each stripe, and then it, each stripe gets fatter and fatter and fatter as it gets towards the end. So it's going to continue doing that. It'll hopefully block out to be an actual shawl size. Right now, it's kind of looking like a kerchief, but I have a whole bunch of stripes left to go. So hopefully, more next week. We'll keep on plugging away at this. And in the meantime, Melissa has knit a beer glove. Um, they are called Gloves with Pints On. They are by Spilly Yarn. I'll have a link to them at the end of the podcast. And it's basically, if you're a beer drinker, here's your pale ale. And I'm not a beer drinker, but I just know that that is apparently what chocolate stouts look like. But So all the different shades of beer you could possibly want if you are a beer fan and you want your hands to stay warm. Um, the pattern does have a fingered version, um, but you can also make them fingerless if you need to do important things like operate a beer bottle opener. They're cool. Um, you can come by and see this in the shop. Mine is still in the back while I'm working on it, but once it's done, I will have it blocked and ready for showing off, but you'll probably see that in a future podcast. Okay, when I was showing you this last week, I was mentioning that the same designer who designed the striped, shetty, striped study shawl <laughs> has also made a dress that we have in the store. And I was poking around and realized I haven't shown you guys Strop's alpaca yet. So here is this very cool dress with really funky pockets in the middle of the dress. And I'm going to double check the name because I want to call it Still Water and it's called Still Light. So this is the Still Light tunic and it is, the sample's done in a size small so it fits Zoe. If you go to the Three Bags Full page on Ravelry, this is named something called Pocket Love. And you can see the project notes there and see photos of it on Zoe and see how it fits. Now, I assumed that the sample was knit to the appropriate size when we got it back from the sample maker that it probably would have met the measurements. And what I did to kind of to see how much the alpaca had grown, because we were talking about, well, okay, I was talking about that on a previous episode. So if this was exactly to length when it came back to us from the sample knitter, um, in the meantime, in the year that it's been here in the store or in storage, it's been hanging a lot. It really has. So it's only grown about an inch from the armpits to the body and another inch from the top of the shoulders down to the armpits. So that's you know, two inches total. That's a fair bit of growth. But if you do consider that it's been vertical that whole entire time, whereas if you made this for yourself and you didn't need it to be on display, I would wear it and then take it off and fold it up again. Or wash it and block it and lay it flat and fold it and keep it flat rather than always having it vertical so that the alpaca is just letting it grow and grow and grow. So um, for something that's been vertical as long as this has, I'm not surprised that it has gotten a little bit longer, but I am impressed that it hasn't grown too much and it's still a beautiful sweater dress. It still fits wonderfully um, and it's very, very elegant and warm and lovely. So let me show you all the colors because we have a lot Okay, show and tell. I was counting these as I was picking them off the shelf, and we have 28? Yeah, 28. It's not 38, but it's a lot. Uh, and it ranges from crazy, crazy brights, like the red tilt. There we go. Um, the reds and the bright greens are pretty much on the bright side. There's a really nice peacock teal that I think is lovely. Uh, and then there's the heathered colors, including this, my most favoritist heathered purple, it really, the video doesn't do it justice. Um, but this is the same purple that you can find in Cascade 220 and Cascade Eagle Wool, and I think, nope, not in Sport, but we have it in, in Barocco Ultra Pack as well. So yet another company, this is by Garn Studio, they make the drops yarn, um, and they're based in Finland, but I'm pretty sure they use the same manufacturing mill that Cascade and Barocco does, because they get exactly the same colors in their heathered mixes. Kind of fascinating. Um, but this is, this, is, this is really lovely and soft and wonderful. It feels better after it's been blocked, just because the alpaca has a little bit of a chance to bloom. 
Um, it is really nice to knit. It slips off your needles pretty quickly. If that bugs you, you might want to try bamboo needles, but if you're okay with managing your stitches and keeping them from running away, then metals will be fine. Okay, things to know. For $7.50, you get 182 yards slash 167 meters in a 50 gram ball. They recommend a two and a half to a three millimeter, and the gauge is about 24 stitches to 32 rows. Now, this is interesting because, let me find an other version. Okay, cool. So, new labels. In English, standard numbers, and everything. Old labels. In, uh, that's Finland, so I'm going to assume that's Finnish. But we still know that, you know, based on context. Paneer, that's probably needle size. Two and a half to three and a half. Ten centimeters equals 23 whatever M. Probably means stitches. By 30p, probably p means rows, and at 50 grams equals approximately 180 meters. Um, the let the labels that are in Finnish do actually have English on the inside of the label, so you won't be totally stuck forever. But if you ever need help translating stuff like that, um, if you look on Google, there are many many websites that have knitting translation from one language to the next. So all the specialized language that we would use in a knitting pattern, it's not all that obscure to go and find a reference that will help you figure it out. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to refrain right now from going into the joys of international knitting patterns, but I do want you to know that if you go into um, a lot of the fancier magazine stores, they'll have European knitting magazines. Some of them will come in English version, some of them don't. Um, if you have access to a Japanese or Korean or Chinese uh, bookstore, like there's one downtown in Vancouver called Book Off, and they have a lot of first-hand and second-hand craft books, and they have all their instructions in Japanese. But the cool, okay, I guess I am talking about this. The cool thing about Japanese patterns is that they are generally chart based and they will have diagrams. So, for instance, in, if, you were, if they had a pattern for a sweater, they would show an outline of the sweater and they would point to the different areas. So, here down at the hemming, hemline, they would have a little chart for whatever stitch pattern the hem is supposed to be in. And here, where it's the body of the sweater, they will then have it pointing to a little chart that shows you that stitch pattern. Shaping goes in there too. Um, the more complicated the pattern is, of course, it'll take a little bit more work. I have the experience of working through Japanese knitting patterns, and yeah, if you wanted to bring one of those to Knitter's Helpline, I would be quite happy to, to work through it. It wouldn't necessarily be quite as smooth as English as a first language patterns, but it's, it's doable. And they're also really fun if you're ever looking for an interesting stitch dictionary book where it, where when you look at North American stitch patterns, we tend to have the same the same cables, the same seed stitch, the same interesting basket weave. Um, if you can find any international stitch dictionary, you will find a lot of variety. Things that you don't see because they're not part of the North American tradition. All fascinating. Just get your hands on it. Okay, that was long and rambling, so I will stop there. Um, hope you're having a fabulous fall. We are getting busy here. If you do need extensive amounts of help, do consider signing up for one of our Knitter's Helpline classes or come in for private lessons. If you ever have a really quick question and you have the time to wait your turn, do feel free to drop by the store. If we're, if we're free, we'll be happy to answer a question or two. If we are busy, we may need you to wait until the store quiets down or think about getting into a class or booking a private. Okay, I think that's all. Hope you have a fabulous week. I will talk to you soon. Bye.